We should spend time in his word. Set a, set a point in, of your day. I don't care when it is, whatever works best for you. Morning, evening, afternoon, whatever works best for you. Set apart some time to prayerfully consider God's word. Romans chapter 6. God is good, amen? And all the time, God is good. Romans chapter 6. Gospels, then Acts, then Romans. Chapter 6, starting in verse 11. Verse 11 uh, is a prerequisite or a previous thought to the chapter 15, or verse 15 and down to the end of the chapter. So we'll start... Chapter 6, verse 11. All right. Chapter 6, verse 11. Are we there? When for there, say amen. amen. All right. Likewise, you also consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts do not yield your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness but yield yourselves to god as those who are alive from the dead and your bodies to god as instruments of righteousness for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under the law but under grace what then shall we sin because we are under the law, not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Do you know, do you not know that whom you yield yourselves as slaves to obey, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But thanks be to God for our, for you were slaves of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart and form of, and form of teaching to which you were con you were entrusted and having been freed from sin you became the slaves of righteousness i speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you have yielded your members as slaves of to impurity and, and iniquity leading to more iniquity even so now yield your members as slaves to righteousness unto holiness for when you were the slaves of sin you were free from righteousness what fruit did you have then from the things of which you were now ashamed the result of those things is death but now having been freed from sin and having become slaves of God you have fruit unto holiness and the end of eternal and and the end is eternal life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, thank you for this word. Help it to set root in our heart and help us to, Lord, apply it to our lives that we would be different and better for you today than we were yesterday. And, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul goes on. Paul starts off in this section he says do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies we talked about this last week but i felt fitting it felt fitting that because it was connected to the next section we needed to talk about it a little more do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies now sin comes in many different forms Sin can be actions, sin can be thoughts, sin can be intents of the heart. Of course, we know the Bible says that out of the innermost, our heart, the mouth speaks. So if we are having a bad attitude, a bad uh, uh, choice of words, those kinds of things, and we're not repentant of it, and we're, we, we live in that kind of a situation, it becomes who we are, then something's wrong with our heart. We need to understand that our heart must be right. 
There's things we must, there, there's three things that, that go along with this. If our, if our heart is right, that produces right living, which produces right speech. So if our heart's right, produces right living, produces right speech. And Paul is talking, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. We're all going to have issues. We're all going to have the things we deal with. We're all going to have uh, these situations where we might be angry. We might be tempted to gossip. We might be tempted to say a swear word. We might be tempted to, to do things or, or say things that are not of God. And we might even act on those things. But, it, but when we do those things, we understand that because we're believers, we should go to God and say, God, I have messed up. Forgive me. We are not immune to sin, but we are, we do have the ability and the relationship with God where we are to ask God to forgive us and move on from that point. The Bible says that God throws our sin from as far as east is from the west. How far is that? Technically speaking, it's a circle, but if you, as far as east is from the west, he'll never remember it throws it into his, his great sea, his sea of great forgetfulness. But we must repent. We must repent. Sin will, sin will pop its head up, but letting it rain in our bodies is when it becomes an iniquity, when it becomes part of who we are, and we cannot let that happen. Verse 15, he says, What then, shall we sin because we are under, not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Just because we're under grace doesn't mean we can live the way we want to. Just because we're under the, gra uh, under gra the, the grace of God, the, the dispensation of grace, that's a, that's a uh, 50 cent phrase from seminary, but the dispensation of grace, just, just because we live in that doesn't mean we can live the way we want to. The Bible says we are not our own. God bought us with a price, and that price is his son's blood. Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves as slaves to obey, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? We are, we become who we obey. We talked about it last week when, we, when I use this illustration a lot. If your old life is over here and your life in God is over here, the more you say yes to God, the more you're going to want to go to God. The more you're going to want to follow God, the more you're going to be more like Jesus. But the more you say no to God and yes to your old life, the more you become like you were. And that's an issue. That becomes an issue. You yield to whom you become. If you are a person that is following God and, and desires more of God, then you will be more like God. But if you're a person who struggles and is unrepentant, your life will be just as it was, if not worse, than it was before you came to know Jesus. We are to yield to God and to yield to his life. <clears throat> the Bible says we're to have the mind of Christ. Christ was sinless. Christ had emotions, but yet he was sinless. Jesus got angry. We read about that in the Gospels where he turned over the money changers, but it was righteous anger. It was righteous anger. We can be angry, but we can be angry and sin not, it says. We're going to have righteous anger. Jesus is always our example. If we're going to be more like Jesus, he has to be our example. We're not going to be more like Jesus if we yield to our old way of thinking. In our old way of life. If we yield our old way of life, then we're, we're walking away from Jesus. He goes on. He says, But thanks be to God, for you, for you were slaves to sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that, for, that form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Slaves by choice. Slaves by choice. Are we slaves by choice? 
If we are slaves of God, then we are slaves of choice, slaves by choice. If we yield to God, if we yield to his will, then we are God's slaves by choice, by our own choice and understanding. Sometimes when we, we do have a slave of choice to our sin nature, but then the sin nature kind of takes over a little bit. It'll keep you longer than you want to be there. And it's harder to get away from. But Jesus desires for us to be his slaves of righteousness, to do that which he wants us to do. We are to do that. How do we do that? How do we, how do we become slaves of righteousness? What are the practical things? Because there are practical things. And it all goes down to choices. We have to choose every single day when we wake up to follow the Lord. We have to choose every single day to follow the Lord. A lot of us, me included, the first thing we think about is our agenda. Well, we've got to get done for the day. Appointments we have to keep, places we have to go. Those things we have to do, that's part of our agenda but the first thing on our agenda is, are we going to follow the Lord? And it should be, yes, we'll follow the Lord. And in that agenda, when we're doing the things in which we do, how can God use me in those situations? How can God help me to be a blessing to someone else? How can God help me to, to encourage someone or uplift someone while I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing on my agenda? Putting God in to that. That's one of the ways... Another way is that we should spend time in God's Word. We should spend time in His Word. Set a, set a point in, of your day. I don't care when it is, whatever works best for you. Morning, evening, afternoon, whatever works best for you. Set apart some time to prayerfully consider God's Word. Now, I'm not talking about we're just reading one chapter a day and dismissing it. Prayerfully consider what the word says and allow God to speak to you and, and apply the changes that God wants you to make. Because every single time we read the word of God or every single time I read the word of God, God reveals something that I need to change. And if I don't want to change it, then there was no point in spending that time. But prayerfully consider and allow God to speak to you through his word through, his, through their, your time with prayer. Spend time with God in prayer. Talk with God in prayer. If you want your relationship to grow with God, talk to God. Get to know who He is. Not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge. Get to know who He is. Spend time in the Word. Spend time with Him. And listen. Prayer is a conversation. We talk to God, we thank God, we ask God for what we need, and then we have to stop and listen. We have to stop and listen and allow God to speak to us. That's a conversation. And in those, and in those times, a lot of times what I will do is I will, if God is speaking to me through prayer or through his word, I will write those things down. Or I will, I will uh, make a mental note and I will apply those things or try to apply those things to make a change to be better for God. That's how we do that. And then come into church, spending time with God's people in, in collective worship is how we get all, 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 all allowing God to move in our life. Because if we don't, if we do the other two and neglect the people of God, we're still not doing the full thing. God can use each and every one of you to speak into each other's lives. God can use you to, to encourage one another. God can use you to, to, to instruct and to, to help guide one another in decision making. And just the collective worship of God is just a sweet presence in His Spirit, a sweet time in His presence. And if we neglect that, the Bible says we should, not, uh, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We should be together to encourage, to uplift, to allow God to move in our midst. 
God might be sharing something with you in your prayer time and, by, and, and, and in the word and you're struggling with it and need confirmation and God could use one of you to speak to that need or that thing to confirm what God's already saying. That's why it's so important to spend time together. To spend time together. I always, I always say this a lot of times. We need to try to make it to Sunday school. We have the, the, the faithful few, and I, I'm not coming down on anybody when I say faithful few, but we have the faithful few that come to Sunday school, but you, you learn a lot in Sunday school. Now, I was late. I know that. I was doing some things at home. I was a little bit late. But you learn things in Sunday school. You, you, you learn the, the, the conversations that happen and the, 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 the discussion that happens can, can confirm things in your own study or it can confirm things what God is speaking to your heart and your life. It's important. Spending time with God is important. Spending time with God's people is important. Spending time in His Word is important. It's crucial. It's crucial. Try going a week without eating. Because a lot of times, a lot of us read our Bible on Sunday and put it on the shelf until next Sunday. Try going a week without eating. Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're not feeding your soul. God desires for us to feed our soul as well as our physical body. It's nourishment, spiritual nourishment for the soul. Now, this will help us to not be slaves to sin, but be slaves to God by choice. Paul goes on, he says, I speak to you in human terms because of the weakness in your flesh. For just as you have yielded your members as slaves to impurity and iniquity, leading to more iniquity, even so, now yield your members as slaves to, to, to righteousness unto holiness. God calls us to be holy. Therefore, as I am holy, be holy. Holiness is something that a lot of churches today do not talk about, do not preach about. Holiness. Being holy. They will talk about things like, you know, uh, they'll have a lot of churches and, and, and some I disagree with, some I don't, but they have the big smoke and the big bands and all these things and they talk about the, the fluffy stuff on top of the scripture. But what about being holy? What does it mean to be holy? It means, it means walking away from the things of your life that are comfortable. Our old life, our old way of living is comfortable. That's why it's so hard for people to come to the Lord because it's all they know. They don't know what the Lord has for them. So they don't go to the Lord. And, the, and, and new Christians, if they're not in the Lord, they struggle because they're so new in the Lord that they go back to their old life because it's comfortable. Being holy is setting aside the comfortable and being uncomfortable in God, being uncomfortable in God willing to change, willing to do things that, the, that is unnatural to the human nature. Which is seeking after God. That's not natural in the human sin nature. That's not natural. Seeking after God. Just setting time to pray can be uncomfortable because it's something we're not used to, but being holy requires it. Reading the Word of God, I've had people tell me before, well, I don't, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not a good reader. I don't like to read. Or, or well, it's uncomfortable. But to be holy, we must put away the uncomfortable and make it part of our life. Some people say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, then read in the Gospels. Jesus says, this is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In the Lord's Prayer, he goes on and he gives us instruction of that. It's uncomfortable to be holy, but we must be holy. God calls us to be holy. Be holy, for I am holy. For when you were the slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit did you have then from the things of which you are now ashamed? If you think back in your old life, when you are not a believer, 
did you have anything that you were that you could say was I'm 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 glad I wasn't a believer because this happened or because that happened that's what he's talking about here what 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 good things come out of not being a believer we don't have the security of eternal life with God we don't have that we don't have peace we don't have true comfort we don't have true joy we don't have any of that but in Jesus we have all of it so what what do we have what was so great about being a sinner People say, oh, you know, when I, when I wasn't a believer, I've heard people say, I, I used to drink all the time. Boy, I had fun. Now I don't have any fun anymore. Okay, well, what, what, when you get drunk, how did you wake up in the morning? How did it feel after a drunk stupor? Was that good? No. But in Jesus, we have much more than that. We have peace. We have comfort. We have joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. We have all of these things that Jesus gives us and we have nothing apart from him. Nothing apart from him. He goes on. The result of those things is death. The wages of sin is death. It goes on and says, so the result of sin will is death. The result of sin is death. That's the result of it. You know, people say things like, and, and I, it kind of cracks me up, but it irritates me too, where they say, well, you know, it's just a little white lie. You know, we could tell a little lie as long as it's for the good of the other person. No. That is still sin. Sin. Matter of fact, it says in the, in, in, the, in the book of Revelation, there's a special place in the lake of fire for liars. There's a special place in hell for those people. You know, we, we, we tend to categorize sins. We say, well, lying, a white lie is okay, it's not as bad, but oh my goodness, don't be a homosexual because that's really bad. And oh my goodness, don't be a murderer because that's really bad. But white lies are okay and, and all this. But, you know, sin is sin to God. Sin is sin to God. And if we harbor sin, we're not going to be with God. If we harbor unforgiveness in our heart, but we live a life that is so, that is fools other people to thinking we're believers, but yet in our heart we harbor unforgiveness, we're not going to be with God. The Bible says if we don't forgive, he will not forgive. Therefore, if we have unforgiveness in our heart, we will not be with God. We will not be with God. If we're liars, we will not be with God. If we are sinful in any way, shape, or form, we will not be with God. The Bible says that no unclean thing shall pass over there. So are we clean? Are we right with God? Is our heart right with God? I hope it is. It's a struggle. It's not easy. It's not easy. But as long as we understand that Jesus is our mediator before God, that we can, we can go before God and say, God, forgive me for that thought. Forgive me for that unforgiveness. Forgive me for that harsh word. Forgive me for whatever. And we can be right with God. I do this every day. I repent every day. Do you know that? I repent every day of whatever I might have done, knowingly or unknowingly, that would hinder my relationship with God. It's a good practice. Because if we repent every day, then we have a short account with the Lord. We, we are made clean every day. That's important. I want to be with God. I don't want to have my own way of thinking and my own uh, desires and my own things 
keep me from God, uh, any, any, any eternity with God. I don't want to have that happen. And I don't want it for you. And I don't want those little things that we dismiss as being okay that God specifically says is not to keep us out of heaven. To keep us out of heaven. And as a pastor, as your minister, as your pastor, I'm required to mention those things. Those things are bad. We need to repent. Every day we need to repent. We need to spend time with God. We need to ask God for forgiveness. We need to pray. We need to come together. And we need to learn of God together. We need to do those things. If we want to be holy, that's what it requires. That's what it requires. Not a weekly inoculation for an hour. It requires a daily walk with God. A daily walk. It requires that. If you're not doing it now, I, I would urge you to start doing something with God every day. It doesn't have to be an hour, two hours, whatever works for you, but start somewhere with God every day. That's between you and God. But start somewhere where you're spending time with God and spending time in His Word every single day. However that would look for you, work for you, find some way to work it out. If you want to be holy, that's how we're going to get there. We're not going to get there by doing our own thing. Amen? So I want to urge you to do those three things. Spend time in prayer. Spend time with God. Spend time with God's people. And allow God to move in your life. If you want to be more like God, you want to have holiness in your life, it's what God requires. Does it make sense? Am I making sense? God is good, amen? Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace and your, and your mercy. Pray that you'd be with us and minister to us now. Help us to know your will and your way. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. You want to be there? Amen. Holiness is a requirement. Relationship with God is a requirement. God bless you this week. Thank you for being here. May God bless you as you go into your week. May God carve out your day to be able to spend time with him and you learn and grow in him this week as you read and study his word. Amen. Amen.